very, very cold day. Ridiculous. It's supposed to be 15 and it's still 8 according to my car. I hope that's not right, but I think that it is. So I really appreciate all of you making your way out here tonight, uh, to, this afternoon, to come talk to us. Again, I want to thank Barbara Hollander and the Art Museum for allowing us to do this year. Really appreciate it. Uh, we'll talk a little more about that as we go through. But I just want to run a pause for pause them. <laughs>
worked in law school, and luckily I impressed a couple of professors and became a teaching assistant. Later I got a second teaching assistantship, and that was a spectacular experience, and I got some real good one-on-one -on -one information and knowledge from many people. And even though law school was a tremendous challenge, I was determined to succeed. And why was I determined to succeed? Not the obvious reason that, and which is not true at all, some attorneys in the room can speak to this, being an attorney is not the pathway to wealth and riches. <laughs> not, not like it used to be, maybe. No, because I saw an opportunity through the law to fulfill the great promise of the Constitution, to build a better world, and to make the American dream open to everyone. And since I worked hard every step of the way, I know what it's like to work. I know what it's like to look for work, to scrape by on the hope of success without the assurance of success. Own the desire in your belly to make you succeed, to make the world a better place. And I also have a knowledge from that that I think is too often absent from our political culture and our society in general. I recognize that you cannot succeed alone. No person is an island, no one has got to where they are, where they are at on their own. And I myself did not do the same either. So, and I thank those people, and I think that's an important thing to remember as we try to build the future of this city. We're not going to do this alone. After law school, I returned to Blair County, and I worked at a local law firm, Andrews and Beach. I mentored there under David Andrews, Carl Beard, Patrick Finelli, and Amy Wood. And all those four attorneys gave me tremendous insight into leading local organized governments and businesses of all sizes. I learned to guide them through the challenges that they face daily. I negotiated business contracts, construction contracts, labor contracts, along their side and on my own. I served as solicitor for school boards and local authorities. And I dealt with the everyday challenges of running local governments and local government agencies. See, those, their problems, their daily problems, were more than just theory for me. I was on the front lines of solving those problems and building better governments and ensuring compliance with the law. I've also served our community since I returned. I coached mock trial teams in the Altoona and Hollinsburg Area School Districts. I would continue to work to promote law related education in our schools. And also, as some of you know, I'm currently participating in a great program called the, uh, <clears throat> the Jamboree of Commerce's Leadership Blair County Program. It's a great program, and I'm involved with a lot of great people, and I'm learning a lot. I continue to learn a lot every meeting about this city and how to improve our county, and it's just spectacular. If any of you haven't had the opportunity to do it, there are young people who should really consider it. I worked with the Red Cross. I served on their board of directors. Um, I'm also on their, I've also been on their disaster action team. I don't do as much of it lately. Um, <coughs> but I've been on their disaster action team while being an assistant public defender. And what is that? What they do on the disaster action team is whenever there's a local fire, when a family's home burns and they suffer the greatest and most tragic loss you could experience as a family, losing your memories, your home, sometimes your pets, we go through these personal tragedies. I've been there as a representative of the Red Cross to give them some small comfort, help them get through the first couple of days. And we help them get the new connections to get to the next couple of days and help them to start to be put in their lives. And it's been a great opportunity. It gives me tremendous insight into some of the suffering and some of the great programs we have available to our citizens. It was almost five years ago and it'll be five years in early March since I purchased my first house in the city of Altoona and chose to call to my home. It's here where myself and my fiance, who was kind of came over from work, and where we plan to work on the rest of our lives. We plan to lay down roots and, and move our family forward. I want to make this city a more, even greater place for our families, for my family, for all of us that are here today to call home. I want to make it a safer place, a place where our elderly are taken care of, a place where our children 
want to raise their families? Where do they want to stay? If we have an attractive workforce, I want to make it a place of opportunity, of growth, and most importantly, of hope. Since June of 2013, I've been working in the Blair County Public Defender's Office. I began working there, and before I get too far that, I was blessed there to work under the leadership of some great local attorneys, like James D. Francesco, Ted Krul, Russ Montgomery, and I met some other spectacular attorneys as well. Attorney Zang, who is here. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet Don Witherspoon, who is here as well. And they've all provided me with tremendous guidance. And through that job, I feel like I've been able to help make up to a better city that way as well. And I also, as a public defender, I've been able to witness the real world consequences of problems that plague our city. What are those problems? Drugs, addiction, crime, stale incomes, lack of hope for permeating large portions of our community. And many of you, some of you live these problems, many of you see these problems on a daily basis in the news. You see robberies, drug busts, and murders in the news. But as public defender, I have a behind-the-scenes view that no other candidate can boast. I speak with police, with experts, with witnesses, with victims and offenders every day. And I get to see the impact of crime in our community on all of those people in every state. And I get a deep insight into the root causes of crime. I hear the challenges that the police face every day trying to keep our city safe. And I will work with the police to seek out any available resources that we can get to make this city safer. I hear from the accused about all the difficulties and challenges that they face that underlie their choices. And through understanding both sides, we can take real solutions to solve the crime problem affecting our city. And look around us here today. This is a, a spectacular location. A fabulous facility filled with great art. In fact, on the other side, I believe there's photographs of early Altoona. So I, I encourage you before you leave to take, take a look and see what the city was once like 150 years ago. And it's gems such as this museum that show all that the city has to offer. But this amazing asset, like so many other great places in this city, sits just down the street from abandoned buildings and empty buildings. If this city is to escape Act 47, we need to begin putting businesses, employees, and residents in these vacant buildings. We need a full solution to these problems. We must follow the example of cities like Pittsburgh and Denver. From their successes, we can learn how to achieve our own and revitalize this city. Take Pittsburgh, for example. Pittsburgh is focused on improving livability through making the city more safe, more visitor friendly, and building a hypercultural tone through increasing walk-in ability and community resources. Pittsburgh began by investing in education, medicine, and art. They used education and medicine to bring in research dollars, young people, and investment. They also used the arts and a strong philanthropic community, both assets this community has, to preserve and revitalize entire communities. Pittsburgh had leaders who were committed to her success, who displayed the willingness to keep pushing the rock up the hill, no matter the obstacles that they faced or the lack of funds present. Our city has many of these same opportunities. Let's market them, let's develop them, let's expand them, let's restore them, and let's preserve them. But most importantly, Pittsburgh was true to itself. And we must do the same. We must be authentic. We must be who we are. We want Pittsburgh. We don't want to be Pittsburgh. We want to be a better out here. And so the big question, how do I do it? I will do what the city so desperately needs. I'll fight for it. I will be a voice for this city, which for too long has been voiceless. I will go to private industry and build the partnerships that bring businesses and manufacturing back to Altoona. I will look for opportunities in philanthropy and grants. Looking to organization, organizations like ArtSpace, which is an uh, uh, organization that helps communities use art and culture to revitalize neighborhoods. They, neighborhoods. they provide grants to do stuff like this. 
you know, make cities, the downtown areas of cities nicer. And that was part of Pittsburgh's strategy. Revitalize communities, not buildings, communities. Many other local families, community organizations, educational entities, and medical facilities have already been great access. Let's keep growing those relationships and bring in new investors. I'll work with neighboring communities to improve <coughs> safety, infrastructure, and recreational opportunities. I'll work with experts to invest in the most effective improvements to make Alabama a more desirable place to bring families, businesses, and visitors. It's important to know what you don't know and be willing to go to the people that know those things. You're not looking for somebody that has all the answers. You're looking for somebody that's willing to say, I got an idea here, but at the same time, if they don't, they can go to somebody that does. They talk to people. That's what we're looking for. Looking for somebody with platonic wisdom, shall we say. I'll go to Harrisburg. I'll work with Governor Wolf. I'll work with state and federal representatives without regard to party affiliation. I'll go to Washington, D.C. I'll go to private industry. I'll search for rent rates. I'll work with anyone that can help make this city a better place. And I think many of you that are here today can attest to my willingness and my ability to work with people that I don't necessarily agree with. I can work with and cooperate with anyone and see the value in their position. And that's an important skill that's going to be necessary <coughs> under this new form of government. And that's what this newly created position is all about. Our city needs a voice. And I want to be that voice. I want to fight for this city and resident and residents because I love being here. This is where I choose to call home. I choose to call up to them. It all comes down to one thing. Bring jobs to this city. We need jobs. It all starts there. Jobs bring development. Jobs bring increased city revenue. Jobs keep our children here. Jobs ensure the stability of our community. Jobs reduce crime, and jobs give us hope. This city is so much longer. Let's market our assets and build new ones. Let's make this city a cool place to live in. Many of you that the city is not cool to live. Let's change that. We have the ability to do that. So today, I stand here before you to ask you to join me, to support me as I embark on the first step of this mission. I will need your help to win this. So please consider taking a few moments and signing up to volunteer. There are sheets in the back. We'll be knocking on doors, we'll be making phone calls, we'll be stuffing envelopes. We'll be working hard together to build a better city. And so I'm here today to formally announce my candidacy for Mayor of Altoona. I look forward to your continued support, and with your help we can make this city great once again. I'd just like to thank you all once again for attending. If you have any questions, I'll be floating around here. And you can feel free to contact the campaign. We've got a Facebook page. Very easy. It's Facebook.com, look for men. So, have a beautiful day, everyone. Thank you for coming. Let's build the future together. Thank you.